22 Grand Slam singles titles between them. Pete Sampras and Yvonne Lendl getting ready to do battle. You, you got to be into this one, John. Well, they've been there, done that, obviously. They've seen it all, but I'll tell you right now, there's some butterflies in, in particularly Pete's stomach to see how he's going to be able to hold up with this wood. I saw the one. He's serving pretty big with the, the, the wood racket, but this is... I'm interested. I mean, I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be Yvonne Lendl to serve first. First set, Lendl to serve. Play. It's the voice of Roberta Kaylee in the chair, and here we go. Out. 15 love. And just like we saw with the Bryans, it may take Pete to a game or two to get a feel for the tension on that racket and where the sweet spot is. The thing he's going to have the toughest time is the backhand. That's one, and I'm going to be, uh, when he has to volley, the volley is the key. So he's going to still try to bank on winning some points on the serve. And that is a, an ace with the slider from Wendell. Three quick points on his serve. Yeah, Yvonne wants that tennis ball back. What's the same one already? Boy. Either that or they're doing a pretty poor job of sending the ball down to his end. But they've run out of balls already. A little loose, Lendl bringing that ball up and down. 40, 15. Strategy for Yvonne is going to get a lot of serves up high to Pete's back end and make him work on the serve. Just get returns low. Easy hold First for Wendell as he gets started. Didn't have much time to warm up. In fact, he was late arriving to the armory tonight. But uh, none the worse for wear as he gets on the board first. And let's head over to the third member of our team, Maylene Ramey. Hey, Maylene. Hey, guys, I just want to tell you a little bit about this interesting surface that we're playing on today. It's called a sport court. And as you can see, it's laid right on top of this wood over here. It took about five hours to lay this down. It's laid down in eight foot strips. And it's a very fast surface that would serve Pete's aggressive game really well. Wait, Get back to the game. It's an old-fashioned hardwood floor under this court. It's good for the body. You know, like, you know, when you age a bit, it gives you a little give. I mean, try stopping and starting cement when you get older. That's why this is a young man's game. 15 all. How many MPHs down will you expect to see Pete serve with the wood frame? Well, you'd be surprised how big he can serve because I, I, as I told you in the opening, 15 years ago, he had three straight 125 or above. But right now, he doesn't want to hit second serve, so he's going to definitely take off some off the first serve. But you're talking about right now, I'm going to say somewhere 105, 110, he's hitting the, the first serve. That's the toughest shot to hit, in my opinion. If Yvonne keeps the ball low and makes him hit some tough half volleys of volley, he's going to be in good shape. It's like I'm at a baseball game. I feel like I'm at Yankee Stadium. Peanuts, uh, popcorn. <laughs> New Yorkers unwilling 40, to let a 30. tennis match get in the way of their cocktail That's hour. That's right. I guess they're getting pumped for CeeLo. CeeLo Green up next. You'll see that concert here on DirecTV. Dougie Fresh has been mixing tunes in, during changeovers. It's food, cocktails, it's uh, obviously cocktails. <laughs> Game Sampras. Well, a little fist pump from Pistol as uh, both guys hold with ease to get started. I think actually Pete could play quite well with this uh, wooden frame if he gets on a bit of a roll and gets used to it. I mean, I'm not sure how much he's even played with it. When you bring two different rackets on the court, something tells me you haven't been doing this for the past month or so. It's a pretty 
Dylan Gimbala, I'll tell you that. That's part of why he won 14 Love slams. 15. You know, I saw him about three weeks ago. We got together for lunch, played a couple, little bit of golf. Best I've seen. I play once every couple years. I'm much better. Was I, this in L.A. or in here? In L.A. So that's the major difference, though. Uh, that he moves pretty, pretty well still, Pete, as Andre saw at the Garden back at the end of February. And that he just galloped up to that, hit a pretty easy winner. And you know, Pete's benefiting from playing with some of the younger guys who are now making their homes out in L.A. Marty Fish is out there now, and and, and Justin Gimmelstab, who's, who's not playing anymore, but, but living out there, and Donald Young. And well, he played with uh, the Djokovic. So they yeah. called him uh, the week before Montreal to get out there, pay his respects, which is smart of Novak, a nice thing. Uh, Pete was feeling good about it to go out and play with him. 15-40. So trouble on Wendell's serve here. Secure the Sanford early break, so to one. whatever issues he had with that wood frame are being solved quickly. The younger man out to the early lead. That was nice of Yvonne hand, you know, pulling the water out for Pete. And why didn't he do that to me when we played? <laughs> I know <laughs> that uh, that five setter. <laughs> you had 84 French. You said you weren't going to bring that well, up. I just going to say Let's one of their Maylene, many, many meetings with Yvonne, but I'll get off the topic, Maylene. Here with Pete Sampras, winner of 14 Grand Slam titles, none of which were won with a wooden racket. Well, but you are doing well tonight. How's it feeling? Honestly, not great. Not only is this a wood racket, it's a cracked wood racket. Is there a crack here? Right there. Oh, boy. But uh, we're, we're having fun. It's not easy to... Come out here and put the wood racket. Um, you know, I, I grew up with the wood racket when I started playing at seven, and I stopped when I was 13. So, uh, but it, the game's different now. But uh, you know, I'm having, I'm having fun with it. Is that the last time you played when you were 13 with the wooden racket? Pretty much. So you didn't train for this at all? Okay, well, I, I hit a few balls on Monday. <laughs> so this, uh, you know, I needed some sort of feel out here, and uh, but it wasn't enough. I can, it doesn't feel like it's coming off very well. But um, you know, we're just having some fun. What's your strategy moving forward? Are you going to get a new racket or play with the cracked one? I'm going to play with this one. All right, good luck to you. Old board, donate racket. See you on the court. All right, thanks. Uh, so as if the wood itself was not handicapped enough, now he's got the, the broken wood. wood. So he's got 90% or 80% of the power he would have with a wood frame that's not cracked. And he's still up for break. <laughs> Pete Sampras, everybody. That's a pretty big serve there. Love that's, 15. Some, uh, that's probably, you know, well in X 110, 115, that serve. Ironically, he loses the point. charge from Sampras draws the error. You know, it's it, it, when you see guys this fast, I mean, if for our age at this point to see him move this well that's intimidating if you're Yvonne this is so evocative when you see him play John his his, his motion his silhouette his style is so distinctive it, it, it almost makes you feel good to see it again watch this sir it's, it's beautiful it's one of the, to me a great motion and I'd say the greatest serve, arguably, in the history of our sport. Toughest guy to break when he was on. The athleticism, his volley, and he could go big on both serves. He, the cojones, as they say. <laughs> and there were guys who served harder, but but the full package of spin, power, placement, dial, he, that, it was him. You got, like, Karlovich and Isner now, and Andy Roddick, you know, hit the first serve harder than he hit it, but... I don't think there's anyone that had a better second serve. 
And I'd go with even Ezevich, Becker, Sampras, three best ever. But these other guys are right there. There's new Roundage, uh, Isner. Volley goes wide. His opponent, Yvonne Wendell, I mean, talk about a guy whose game evolved over time. He, he started as a power player, tried to turn into a serve and volleyer later in his career as he attempted to win Wimbledon. Never quite got that done. Where do you place Lendl in the pantheon of, of great champions? Well, I put him in the top ten for sure. You know, perhaps a little bit higher depending Is on who you ask. I mean, you obviously got Laver's my idol. You game got Federer Lendl. and Nadal. Two games you got all. Pete. After that, there's varying opinions you know, is it is it Agassi or Lendo is it Bjorn Borg I you know, I've got to put Borg with his record somewhere somebody hopefully besides my father would throw me somewhere in that mix um, but it's just a matter of it but certainly Yvonne uh, took this game to a different direction with the, the power game the fitness uh, this the strength the, the off-court training the his preparation as far as, love. I mean, he went to Australia a month early you know, before Christmas to prepare for that tournament when the top players weren't even playing there. So he did, you know, he's uh, one of the greats, no doubt. 40 love. Back-to-back -back aces from Lendl there. He had that magical year in 1982 when he entered 23 tournaments and won 15 of them. Wow. record of 107 and 9 that year. Lendl leads three games to two. And it's 3-2 Lendl in this first set. For U.S. Open final instead of <laughs> yeah, that, that, I, I prefer that okay. if you don't mind. That was uh, a revenge moment. 3-4 and 1. Well, the toughest thing about the U.S. Open for the guys trying to win it, I think, anyway, you get out there the Saturday, Sunday semifinal, uh, playing the semi Saturday, Sunday finals is pretty rough. So sometimes you get lucky. Pete is just, he's, he's upset he just dumped serve. Go down two threes, thrown one of his two rackets into the crowd and given it to a young boy, which is nice, but that leaves him with one crack racket. <laughs> Is there a rule where he could perhaps come back? Like if he broke this, would he have to call the Bryans up or come over here or would he? Let's see, we got plenty of wood here. He should try one of these. Well, you gave Bob a racket off the wall in the doubles match and they ended up winning. So maybe he should come shopping over here at the booth. I, I would think so. He's got Bjorn. He's got Bjorn had the grip all the way up to the throat. That would really differentiate his racket. It was extremely unusual to see. Strung his racket tighter than anyone in the history of the sport for with a wood racket. 30, 15. The human backboard. What was the tension that he would string? 85 at? with thin gut. We're told that Pete has strung this Donna at, at 50 tonight. Well, you, yeah, that's a round into the 40s or 50 that I would string my racket. Try to use it as more of a slingshot. Use your opponent's pace, time it. You don't see that much than nowadays, but that's a pretty big serve he just hit right 40, there. That's 15. a good serve. So he's up a break and then sent it back Lendl's way. He, he loves New York, Petey. He's got, as you look at that classic service motion, he's got bookends on his career here in this place. He started his first slam was the 1990 U.S. Open, and his last was in 02. You don't mention that either. He beat me and Yvonne quarter semis and beat Andre Agassi in the finals. And he's like Joe DiMaggio for uh, our sport. He left winning the Open. Let's not forget that. He's age 31. 40, 30. And he had gone through a dry spell right before that where he'd gone a, uh, more than two years without winning, not, not just a slam, but a tournament of any kind. Well, he didn't care a whole lot at that stage about tournaments, although it was irritating, but he wanted the big one. But to go out and win it the way he did, shut everybody up, and then shut it down, retire. I mean, there's not many people that can say that. 2002, he beat uh, Roddick in the quarterfinals, Shank Shalkin in the semis, and then Agassi in that memorable final, and then took the ball and walked away. Name the last player you can think of. You know, it's like Jim Brown in football. There's Joe DiMaggio in baseball that left
Sort of this incredible high.